so in this video we will be discussing about the java code implementation of the prims algorithm that we have already discussed in the previous video so in the java code we can see that the number of nodes is 5 and uh, we have an array list or the adjacency list declared where we have uh, a self-defined class data type which is node why because you know it's a weighted graph so we are going to store it in terms of pairs basically a node as well as the weight so that's why a node so let's check out this self-defined uh, data type we have a node which is having int v as well as int weight so i've written a couple of functions get v and get weight so that we can easily access v and weight and we have our constructor so that we can easily assign v and weight so you can see over here i've assigned a dummy graph to this adjacency list using this constructor right after that i've called uh, the sprims algo function with the adjacency list and the number of nodes so this is basically the dummy graph that has been assigned so if you check out this function this is the prims algorithm function which is going to print your prims algorithm and we are taking the adjacency list as well as the number of nodes so at first what we do is we take the key array we take the parent array we take the mst that is what we took and we make sure that the key array is assigned to a very big number because we were assigning it to infinity and the mst is assigned to false and the parent is assigned to minus one so we make sure we do it for everyone right after that what we do is we assign key zero to zero because that is the first node where we start from after that we are going to loop till n minus one time remember this we are going to loop till n minus one times why because a spanning tree always has n nodes and n minus one edges that's why we are going to loop till n minus one edges that's that's very simple now what is the first step the first step was to iterate in the key array and figure out which is the minimal so that is what i've done if it is not a part of mst and i compare the value with minimal i simply iterate and figure out which is the minimal value so this is a simple for loop which figures out the minimal value in the key such that that key index is not part of your mst so you get the minimal value once you have got the minimal value if you remember what you did you marked it as true in the mst so you mark it as true in your mst once you have done that what's your next step the next step was super simple if you remember you iterated for its adjacent nodes and you made sure you updated the key index if the weight was lesser and it was not a part of MST. So let's do that. This is how you iterate for adjacent nodes. Simple. Adjacent of get of u will give you all the list of uh, adjacent nodes and then you just for each loop on that. So if that is not in the MST, not a part of the MST, what do you do is you compare if the weight is smaller than what is there in the key you simply update that value of q if you remember you updated it if it was smaller and you updated the parent now this parent is coming from u so you update it to u so very simple get the minimal traverse for its adjacent nodes update the key update the parent and you're done keep on doing this for all the n minus one edges and once you have done that you remember how you printed the edges you traversed for one to n and the edge will be from i to parent of i so you just print that edge this will be your minimum spanning tree if you print all the edges those edges will be part of your minimum spanning tree so the time complexity of this algorithm i'm just ignoring these input time complexity i can say i'm using a n loop to assign these so big of n complexity is for sure now a n loop outside a n loop inside so it is n square because i'm running two big o of n loops nested big o of n loops the time complexity is n into n that's big o of n square and i know that's not a good that's not a good complexity so this is the brute force implementation of prim's algorithm which is n square actually which is greater than n square because n square plus n then there's a plus e for here because because if you're traversing for all adjacent nodes for all the n nodes it's n plus e so it's definitely greater than n square so i can say this is not a not a good time complexity hence i need to optimize it so let's check out where can i optimize what are we doing over here you're basically trying to figure out the minimal key value right which is not a part of mst 
so why don't i act smart yes why don't i act smart and and over here i can implement a heap data structure because i'm just finding the minimum so if i can implement a heap data structure i can omit this big of and loop because the heap data structure gives me minimum in logarithmic time so i can remove this and i can have a heap data structure or a priority queue that is used in java right java collections does give you a priority queue so if i can use priority queue i'm going to get the minimal in logarithmic of n right and every time i'm assigning a key i can insert that into a priority queue because instead of assigning key if i insert that to priority queue i can easily get the minimal from priority queue so if i can do this probably i can i can reduce the complexity of the code so let's check out the efficient complexity of the code where priority queue is implemented so now in the efficient implementation of the code everything will stay same you are going to take the graph input and after that you are going to define key parent mst and you are going to assign it everything is going to stay the same the only stuff that you will change is you are going to define a priority queue with node data type the node class in the node class you are going to implement a comparator right and whenever you implement a comparator you have to write a self comparator and the priority queue is going to work on the basis of this comparator and i'm making sure that it works on the basis of the weight variable right so you're going to understand it when you you'll see the explanation basically i'm making sure that the minimal guy is at the top i'm designing a minimal priority queue that's it i'm making sure that the minimal guy is at the top and if it's uh, greater it stays at the bottom and if it's equal the minimal guy takes step so what we do is we were trying to figure out the minimal in the key so key of 0 is assigned to 0 so what we do is in the priority queue we insert the zero as well as the key value right that is what is assigned and if you look out at the constructor new of node that is having v and w so w is the weight that you are assigning so that's why i said write a comparator on weight because we want the priority queue to work on this key of zero the value because we want to figure out the minimal so as you remember in the brute force we iterated for n minus 1 now instead of iterating in the for loop what we do is we simply call priority queue and say him hey give me the index give me the index which has the minimal key value and you can say get a v and you'll easily get it so instead of running an entire for loop i convert that into a priority queue and this easily gives me and once you have that index you can again do the same thing mark it and once you have marked it what's the next step traverse for all its adjacent nodes and when you are traversing for all its adjacent node what do you do if it's not a part of mst and the weight is less it's very simple you change the value of key right and you also made sure that the parent was changed that these things are done but when you are replacing the value of key that means it's a new queue it's a new it's a new key value that is coming in so just make sure that is inserted into priority queue so for the next time when you figure out the minimal you easily get it so you're just inserting keys whatever keys you are generating you are inserting so whenever you call priority queue it will automatically give you the minimal so this is how you can implement a heap data structure so now if i talk about the time complexity everything will stay same if you iterate from 1 to n you'll easily get all your if you iterate from 1 to n you will easily get all your edges of your minimum spanning tree so now let's talk about the time complexity again a big of n was for here a uh, n for here a logarithmic n for whenever you say pq dot pol or pq dot add it's a logarithmic of n for sure so i can say it's a n log n now you know this for loop plus this adjacent nodes is n plus e because whenever you traverse for adjacent nodes in a graph it's n plus e it's not n square so overall if i if i analyze it's 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 almost about n log n it might be a bit more but it's almost near about n log n which is much much better than the complexity of n square that brute force was applying because i did implement a heap data structure so i can say the complexity the time complexity is near about n log n to be very uh, rough around and the space complexity obviously will be big of n uh, these three loop these three arrays then the adjacency node so i can call it as roughly big of n so that's the time complexity 
and the space complexity for the efficient implementation so guys i hope you have understood the brute force as well as the efficient implementation for the prims algorithm so just in case you did please 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 make sure you like this video and with this i'll be wrapping up this video 